So it's been quite a while since we've done videos. Uh, and there's a good reason uh, new information was coming so fast, I needed time to digest it. Uh, there's a real revolution occurring in prostate cancer. Uh, first, there's been an expansion in the number of people working on the disease at the lab and clinical level. So we've reached a critical mass. And the other thing is we've had a, a influx of really bright young people uh, taking a different look at things. Uh, and one of the major transitions that's happening uh, is rather than viewing prostate cancer as basically a black box, a single disease, uh, there's recognition now that prostate cancer is composed of many different subtypes uh, and the best approach for the disease is to thoroughly document the varieties of prostate cancer and tailor treatment uh, for those subtypes. Uh, so today I'm going to review one of those subtypes. Uh, and it's a bit of a tale, so bear with me. And it starts with uh, familial breast and ovarian cancer. Uh, there are two breast cancer genes, BRCA1 and BRCA2. Uh, that are associated with increased risk of breast cancer, uh, and particularly the BRCA2 ovarian cancer. Uh, and so what is the, are the BRCA1 and 2 genes? Well, they're DNA repair genes. Uh, and so uh, these families have defective version of these DNA repair genes. As a result, uh, the genes in their normal tissues uh, can't repair after damage. Uh, and so the odds of a mutation likely to create a cancer becomes much more likely. Uh, what isn't generally appreciated is uh, people with families with BRCA1 and 2 have increased risk of other cancers, uh, pan pancreas, etc. Now, just that the breast and ovarian dominate. Uh, BRCA2 about 40% of the men in those families develop prostate cancer. Uh, and, we, and over the last two years, there's been a real rush to uh, characterize what prostate cancer is in a BRCA2 patient. Uh, and often they're much more aggressive uh, than standard prostate cancer. Uh, in patients with metastatic disease, uh, hormone resistance often develops in less than a year, sometimes as quickly as six months. Uh, and the cancer can spread uh, quite rapidly and involve tissues that aren't normally uh, invaded by prostate cancer. Um, while lung and metastasis occur in prostate cancer, rarely aggressive, but in BRCA2 patients, the lung involvement can be quite aggressive. Liver involvement... Um, I have a BICA2 patient whose cancer invaded their pancreas. I've never seen that. Uh, so once the prostate cancer in a BICA2 patient gets rolling, uh, it's able to rapidly evolve resistance to existing therapy. Um, so this led to a clinical trial uh, of the drug that's been developed to treat BRCA2, 1 and 2 mutant uh, cancers. Uh, the brand name is Linparza, L-Y-N-P-A-R-Z-A. Uh, the generic name is Olaparib. Uh, and so Johan de Bono and his group at the Royal Marsden uh, in London took 49 patients who had failed Extandi, Zytega, and Taxotere, and treated them with Linparza. Uh, this was published on October 20th in the New England Journal of Medicine. Make sure you get that citation. You can get it online and read it. Uh, and among the 49 patients, 33% responded. This is an oral agent twice a day, generally really well tolerated compared to other drugs might be available to these patients. Uh, 
and the 33% response rate is quite appreciable. But they then did a very important step. They looked for DNA repair mutations in the patients. And if the patient had a DNA repair defect, the response rate was 88%. So that 88% is stunning in and of itself, but we know molecularly how to identify these patients if you're able to biopsy the cancer. Now, of course, BRCA2 mutations, BRCA1 mutations, are quite uncommon. And so 33% far exceeds any estimate of the frequency of these repair mutations. So the obvious conclusion uh, is that these aren't all germline inherited mutations, but things that develop in the cancers or progresses. Perhaps the most striking thing about the paper was that while it was developed to target BRCA1, BRCA1 and 2, uh, patients with other DNA repair mutations also responded. Uh, the most common uh, second, uh, most common BRCA mutations, BRCA2, BRCA1s were uncommon. Uh, and the other mutations, ATM, uh, atel at ataxia telangiectasia mutated. I know it's a mouthful. Try and say that fast three times. Uh, now, ATM exists in the DNA repair pathway, and the immediate down step is CHECK2, and those were also elevated. Uh, so in the BRCA2 mutations, treated with Linparza, the response rate was 100%, 7 out of 7. For the ATM mutated patients, the risk of the response rate was 4 out of 5. Uh, so if you have metastatic prostate cancer, you feel chemotherapy and the cancer is biopsyable, uh, this opens the door for a spectacularly effective treatment for that subset of patients. So this illustrates the division of uh, prostate cancer into a subgroup with a unique treatment opportunity. I've been working with Keras Life Sciences for many years, and I find them a great group to deal with. I particularly worked with Rebecca Feldman, who is uh, one of the brightest people I've ever worked with. Uh, and they offer this service, among others. They biopsy the tumor. They not only look at the genes uh, and proteins that govern the response to most chemotherapy drugs and give information about the inherent aggressiveness of the cancer, they can do the complete DNA repair defect panel relevant to Linparasa. Uh, so anyone listening to this, if you want to explore that, talk to your physician about having a sample uh, sent to Keras Life Sciences with a specific request to look at DNA repair mutations. And if BRCA2 or ATM are mutated, then Lynn Parza uh, offers great promise uh, for treatment. Now, uh, the other striking thing ab about uh, the data we've gotten from Keras on about 118 patients uh, is that the patients with the DNA repair defects um, have about a 75% predicted response rate to tax to, to carboplatin, another drug. So suddenly uh, we have a, 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 a list of potential drugs to use in sequence or in combination uh, with patients with DNA repair defects post taxotere now, the other interesting twist of this is uh, Obdivo, which targets PD-1 in lung cancer, tends to be most effective uh, in the cancers that have that had the most mutations. And, of course, these patients fit that bill. So one provocative implication of this, of this evolving data is that immunotherapy of the drug like Oloparib might also be promising uh, in these patients with... Uh, a very aggressive, advanced, nasty prostate cancer. Um, so it's a very exciting new area uh, that came out of nowhere. Uh, finally, I'd just like to congratulate Johan Dobano and his group at Royal Marsden because this is just one of a number of major contributions they've made. Uh, they played a major role in the development of Zytiga, 
uh, and Zofigo or Radium 223. Two major hits, and now they've got a third. Uh, they have to get their reward for one of the most productive uh, prostate cancer research groups in the world. That's it for today.